Hi, everyone. I'm E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. I'm pleased to introduce our bi-weekly feature on health, exercise, and nutrition, featuring Fred Bartlett, a legend in the legal field and co-founder of StrongPath, as well as Dr. Wes Smith, Chair of Undergraduate Exercise Physiology Program and Director of the Graduate Program in Nutrition and Human Performance at the University of Miami, as well as the Chief Product Development for Strong Path. Each week, Wes and Fred will look at different areas of health, exercise, and nutrition and discuss its impact on longevity and quality of life. Wes and Fred, take it away. Well, hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about some, some new research that will surprise a lot of people seeing this. It's about the really unusual, surprising effects, beneficial effects of exercise that we're now beginning to learn about. For example, uh, and these are quotes, it's now well established that exercise improves brain health. It actually grows new neurons in your brain. It actually stops the loss of volume of your brain that, you, that comes with age. And it, it prevents, believe it or not, 80% of the chronic diseases that kill us. Cancers, heart disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes and 33 others, according to Harvard, 80% of those chronic diseases are, can be prevented by exercise. Now, when I, when I talk to people and test out on them what they think, they say, how can doing a curls, for example, or squats affect your brain? If you're, you're, the muscles aren't anywhere near the brain, how can that be? And they say, how can high intensity interval training that is getting your pulse up to 170 and then letting it get back down. How in the world can that prevent chronic diseases? And doctors always want to say, physicians always want to say that what's the mechanism? How can simple exercises drive seemingly amazing unrelated health changes? Well, works this way. The New York Times a week ago came out with a piece that said that even a short workout maybe a 15 minute workout causes actual physical changes in as many as 10,000 different molecules in our bodies and our cells and our bloodstreams. All these physical changes in these 10,000 molecules going on inside your body, all throughout your entire body, uh, improve our health by actually transforming the cells inside our bodies. Now, some of the health benefits are known that we've talked about, but there's, there's thousands of other things that are happening to these molecules and people are still studying it. All we know is that there are, there are gonna be zillions of other health benefits that we're, we're gonna learn about in the next few years. So the question is, we, we know that the effects of exercise are way broader than we used to think. And we know that exercise actually changes molecules in our bodies. How in the world does exercise drive these thousands of molecular changes? Well, it has to do with evolution. There, when, when we are born, there are scores of tiny cellular level mutations when we're born. Darwin called them variations. Some of these variations or mutations are favorable. They give the body an advantage in surviving and reproducing, having progeny in the environment the person exists in at the time. Uh, when you live longer and have more progeny, that means that these favorable mutations, these good things that are causing all kinds of beneficial health aspects from your brain to uh, getting chronic diseases, all favorable mutations will be inherited and will become part of our genome. And that's what Darwin, of course, and I think it was 18, maybe 1845 or so, he called natural selections. He said, because there are, there are good mutations, there are bad ones and there are neutral ones, but the only ones that end up in the genome are the good ones because the ones that uh, are bad cause you to die younger and you don't have as many kids and they don't get in your, they're not, in, they're not inherited. And ones that don't cut either way don't get in the genome but the advantageous ones end up in the genome. That means, just think about this, for millions of years of evolution, this has taken place. 
the good mutations have been selected for and included in our bodies. That means by now our bodies have become entirely composed of millions of favorable variations. And, and when we say, what's a favorable mutation or variation? It's favorable in the environment that existed at the time that you were, the body competed. So now, the last thing we're gonna do now to see why this uh, exercise is so important, what was the environment? existing at the time all of these favorable variations were selected for? Well, it was a world of constant, intense physical activity. The human genome involved within an environment a million years ago, even 50,000 years ago, of high physical activity. So our bodies today, our human genome today was designed by like the hand of God or something, by natural selection for success in an environment of constant high physical activity. So what does that say about today? The world is sedentary today. We don't have that environment anymore. Our bodies are, remember our bodies are at their best, their very best when they're subjected constantly to intense physical activity. Well, of course we want our bodies to always be at their best. If, if we get it set, sick with a chronic disease, we want our bodies to be able to resist it. If, if whatever happens to it, we want our bodies to be at their very, very, very best. And I, as I've explained now, now we know that our bodies are at their very best when subjected constantly to intense physical activity. Well, we don't live in a world like that anymore. So we have to bring in exercise as an artificial stimulus. So our bodies are crying out for exercise to function at their best. And all we have to do is give them the exercise they were designed for. It's just that simple. You got any, did I say anything wrong, Wes? <laughs> no, I mean, this is uh, there's a lot of stuff you covered there, Fred. This is great. Um, I, I like to maybe bring it back to a high level of what you were just mentioning, like a, a, a aerial view of this whole process you're talking about with evolution and the benefits of exercise, we can think that in a stress response, and all of us have stress in our daily lives, in the not normal uh, physiological stress response, we have a fight or flight response driven by the sympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system. And in that we are obviously preparing to run away from something or beat something up and that's fight or flight. Natural process in response to stress. And through evolution, you imagine that every time we were stressed early on, if you go back to the Paleolithic period, 2.5 million years ago to roughly like 11,000 years ago, that pretty much anything that was a stressor probably did involve flight or fight. In modern times, our stress that we encounter from day to day has to do with our job or relationships or uh, grades on an exam, et cetera. And they are not accompanied by the natural fight or flight. So what we're getting is a fight or flight response that is lacking the fight or flight, the physical activity element of it. And what happens during the fight or flight response, of course, we get a surge in our blood pressure. We get an increase in our heart rate. We get dilation of our airways, mobilization of sugar, mobilization of fat. We and have if to we're not using it, all the time. Right. If we're not using it in a sedentary society, that sugar is going to just raise our blood sugar. Uh, it's just going to stay in our blood. We're not using it. Our lipids are going to be accumulating, especially centrally. If we're spending most of our time seated, most of our blood flow is through our visceral. So it's going to be deposited in a central location and we're going to get android obesity and visceral fat. That means and now our blood belly. pressure. Yeah, our blood pressure is rising for no reason. So what you said right there, Fred, is spot on. It's that the exercise is the replacement for the fight or flight that we're lacking in modern times. So that we should see this natural matching of physical activity with the stress that we have in our daily lives for improved health. And then I also thought, you know, what you mentioned about brain health and exercise is extremely important. And whenever we think of the benefits of exercise, we should think of it in two ways. We should think of the acute benefits, like right immediately following an exercise session in the chronic benefits, because there's always both. Like if I exercise this morning, which I did, my blood pressure can be as low as 12 points systolic lower immediately following the exercise, but also chronically over time, my blood pressure is going to be lower because I'm physically active. When we think of brain health, we see the same types of things. With During exercise, our brain blood flow actually increases. Not proportionally, most of the blood flow goes to the muscle, 
But in absolute amounts, we see about a 200 to 250 ml increase in our cardiac output to our brain. So we're improving brain blood flow. In addition to that, as you mentioned about these little local hormones, our muscle releases things like brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which has been shown to enhance the autophagy of our neurons where we're basically replacing the parts. It's like having a car and putting in a new engine, we're replacing the parts within the neurons to make them healthier. And then finally, from a chronic perspective, we know that brain disease is very similar to cardiometabolic disease. Uh, atherosclerosis, build up a plaque in our arteries, um, inflammation, oxidative stress, all those things damage blood vessels and can hurt the heart. They also hurt the brain. So when we see through physical activity an improvement on our blood lipids and our blood pressure and our antioxidant status and lowering inflammation, we could definitely see improvements in brain health. So it you goes know, across the what? board. When I'm, I have a lot of friends who are big time athletes just because I like sports. One of my mm -hmm. good friends is a NFL Hall of Fame quarterback. And he said to me once that before the Super Bowl, because he was feeling the anxiety of the fight or flight reflex, he threw up. And then when he got hit the first time, he felt wonderful again because he, his body then was doing what it was intended to do, not sitting there and waiting while he got eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. And it worked. And there's, that, there's physiology behind that too, because we don't want, in a fight or flight scenario, we don't want food contents in our gut. We want to clear out the gut. So the vomiting is a natural reaction to prepare for fight or flight. Uh, so again, it, it totally makes sense. It's also why during exercise, we remove blood flow away from the viscera and we're sending it out to the tissues. So now the blood sugar that's in circulation can go to the muscle and be stored there as glycogen. The blood lipids that are building up in our blood can now go to the muscle and go to other tissues and be stored there. So the, the benefits of exercise obviously are wide ranging. And I love the fact that without a science background, you were able to pick up this information, relate it to the average person and understand its importance and be an advocate for it. It's, it's amazing, so. Well, let me give everybody the takeaway. This is the really good news. We know that workouts, even a short one and a long one is better, actually cause physical changes in, the, in 10,000 different molecules in our bodies. We know maybe that they're all beneficial because of environment, uh, natural selection. And, but we, we now know, we know what maybe a hundred of these changes are. That means there's maybe 9,000, 9,900 thing, good things going on in your body when you exercise that make us healthy that we could, nobody even understands yet, but we, we can get the benefits of it just by going to the gym every day and working our butts off and we, we know uh, all these changes will take place and we know they'll all be favorable and they'll give us all great lives. And that's what we, that's what we talk about all the time. Thank you. Nice seeing you, Wes. Thanks for stepping in. Good seeing you too.